God bless you. I'll be reading today from the epistle of the Apostle St. Paul to the Romans. This will be from the 1537 Matthew's Holy Bible. You're welcome to follow along. The first chapter. Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, put apart to preach the gospel of God, which he promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, that make mention of his Son, the which was begotten of the seed of David, as pertained to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, with power of the Holy Ghost that sanctifieth since the time that Jesus Christ our Lord rose again from death, by whom we have received grace and apostleship, to bring all manner heathen people unto the obedience of the faith that is in his name, of the which heathen are you a part also, which are Jesus Christ by vocation. To all of you of Rome, beloved of God, and saints by calling, grace be with you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. First verily, I thank my God, through Jesus Christ, for you all, because your faith is published throughout all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, beseeching that at one time or other a prosperous journey, by the will of God, might fortune me to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I might bestow among you some spiritual gift to strengthen you with all, that is, that I might have consolation to gather with you, through the common faith, which both ye and I have. I would that ye should know, brethren, how, that I have oftentimes purposed to come unto you, but have been let hitherto, to have some fruit among you, as I have among other of the Gentiles. For I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to them which are no Greeks, unto the learned, and also unto the unlearned. Likewise, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach a gospel to you of Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe, namely to the Jew and also to the Gentile. For by it the righteousness which cometh of God is open from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God appeareth from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men which withhold the truth in unrighteousness. Seeing what may be known of God, that same is manifest among them, for God did show unto them, so that his invisible things, that is to say, his eternal power and Godhead, are understand and seen by the works from the creation of the world. So they are without excuse, inasmuch as when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but waxed full of vanities in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were blinded. When they counted themselves wise, they became fools and turned the glory of their mortal God unto the similitude of the image of mortal man and of birds, and four-footed beasts, and of serpents. Wherefore God likewise gave them up unto their hearts' lusts, unto uncleanness, to defile their own bodies between themselves, which turned his truth unto a lie, and worship and serve the creatures more than the Maker, which is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto shameful lusts, for even their woman did change the natural use unto the unnatural, and likewise also the men left the natural use of the woman, and granted their lust one to another, and none of the man wrought filthiness, and received in themselves the reward of their error, as it was according. And as it seemed not good unto them to be a known of God, even so God delivered them up unto a lewd mind, that they should do those things which were not comely, being full of all unrighteous doing, of fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, morther, debate, deceit, evil conditioned, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, doers of wrong, proud, boasters, bringers up of evil things, disobedient to father and mother, without understanding, covenant-breakers, unloving, truce-breakers, and merciless, which men, though they knew the righteousness of God, how that they which commit such things are worthy of death, yet not only do the same, but also have pleasure in them that do them. The second chapter. Therefore art thou inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou be that judgest, for in that same wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest even the same self things, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth, against them which commit such things. Thinkest thou this, O thou man that judgest them which do such things, and yet doest even the very same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Either despisest thou the riches of his goodness, patience, and long sufferance, and rememberest not how that the kindness of God leadeth thee to repentance. But thou after thine hard heart that cannot repent, heapest thee together the treasure of wrath against the day of vengeance, when shall be opened the righteous judgment of God, which will reward every man according to his deeds, that is to say, praise, honor, and immortality, to them which continue in good doing and seek eternal life. But unto them that are rebellious and disobey the truth, and follow iniquity, shall come indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon the soul of every man that doth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. 
To every man that doth good shall come praise, honor, and peace to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no partiality with God. But whosoever hath sinned without law shall perish without law. And as many as have sinned under the law shall be judged by the law. For before God they are not righteous which hear the law, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For if the Gentiles which have no law do of nature the things contained in the law, then they having no law or law unto themselves would show the deed of the law written in their hearts. For their conscience beareth witness unto them, and also their thoughts, accusing one another, or excusing at the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and trusted in the law, and rejoicest in God, and knowest his will, and hast experience of good and bad, and that thou art informed by the law, and believest that thou thyself art a guide unto the blind, a light to them which are in darkness, an informer of them which lack discretion, a teacher of the unlearned, which hast an example of that which ought to be known, and of the truth in the law. But thou which teachest another teachest not thyself, thou preachest a man should not steal, and yet thou stealest. Thou sayest, a man should not commit adultery, and thou breakest wedlock. Thou abhorrest images, and robbest God of his honor. Thou rejoicest in the law, and through breaking the law, dishonorest God. For the name of God is evil spoken of among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Circumcision verily availeth, if thou keep the law. But if thou break the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcised keep the right things contained in the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it keep the law, judge thee, which being under the letter and circumcision, dost transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is a Jew outward, neither is that thing to circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is hid within, and the circumcision of the heart is a true circumcision, which is a spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. The third chapter. What preferment then hath the Jew, of the word of advantage of circumcision? Surely very much, for some of them was committed the word of God. What then, though some of them did not believe, shall their unbelief make the promise of God without effect? God forbid, let God be true, and all men liars, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and shouldest overcome when thou art judged. If our unrighteousness make the righteousness of God more excellent, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous which taketh vengeance? I speak after the manner of men. God forbid, for how then shall God judge the world? If the verity of God appear more excellent through my lie unto his praise, why am I henceforth judged as a sinner? And say not rather, as men evil speak of us, and as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil that good may come thereof, whose donation is just. What say we then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have already proved how that both the Jews and Gentiles are all under sin, as it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have deceived. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and wretchedness are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Yea, and we know that whatsoever the law saith, he saith it to them which are under the law. That all mouths may be stopped, and all the world be subdued to God, because that by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in the sight of God. For by the law cometh the knowledge of sin. Now verily is the righteousness that cometh of God, declared without the fulfilling of the law, having witness yet of the law and of the prophets. The righteousness, no doubt, which is good before God, cometh by the faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned, and lack the praise that is of valor before God, but are justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath made a seed of mercy, through faith in His blood, to show the righteousness which before Him is of valor, and that He forgiveth the sins that are past, which God did suffer to show at this time, the righteousness that is allowed of Him, that he might be counted just, and a justifier of him which believeth on Jesus. Where is then thy rejoicing? It is excluded. By what law? By the, by the law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we hold that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, even of the Gentiles also. 
For it is God only which justifieth circumcision which is of faith, and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then destroy the law through faith? God forbid, but we rather maintain the law. God bless you all. Here's a verse in Galatians. It is a good one to memorize. Faith which by love is mighty in operation. And being a new creature in Christ. God bless you all. There will likely be another reading, Lord willing. Keep in my prayers. Mercy, grace, and peace, and love of Jesus Christ always be with us. Amen. God bless you. This is part two of a reading from the epistle of the Apostle St. Paul to the Romans. The fourth chapter. You're welcome to follow along. Jesus loves you all very much, and he's coming very, very soon. Call upon his name, and he shall save you. Believe the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. So this is the fourth chapter. What shall we say, then, that Abraham our father, as pertained to the flesh, did find? If Abraham were justified by deeds, then hath he wherein to rejoice. But not with God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. To him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of favor, but of duty. To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, is his faith counted for righteousness. Even as David describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God describeth righteousness without deeds, blessed are they whose unrighteousness are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is that man to whom the Lord imputeth not sin. Came this blessedness then upon circumcised or upon uncircumcised? We say verily, how, that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it reckoned? In the time of circumcision, or in the time before he was circumcised? Not in the time of circumcision, but when he was yet uncircumcised. And he received the sign of the circumcision as a seal of the righteousness which is by faith, which faith he had yet being uncircumcised, that he should be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also, and that he might be the father of the circumcised, not because they are circumcised only, but because they walk also in the steps of that faith that was in our father Abraham before the time of circumcision. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not given to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness which cometh of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, then is faith but vain, and the promise of none effect. Because the law causeth wrath. For no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore by faith is the inheritance given, that it might come of favor, and the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to them only which are of the law, but also to them which are of the faith of Abraham, which is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father to many nations, even before God, whom thou hast believed, which quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not, as though they were. Which Abraham, contrary to hope, believed in hope, that he should be the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And he fainted not in the faith, nor yet considered his own body which was now dead, even when he was almost an hundred year old, neither yet that Sarah was past childbearing. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was made strong in the faith, and gave honor to God, full certified that what he had promised, that he was able to make good, and therefore was it reckoned to him for righteousness. It is not written for him only that it was reckoned to him for righteousness, but also for us, to whom it shall be counted for righteousness. So we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from death, which was delivered for our sins, and rose again for to justify us. The fifth chapter. Because therefore that we are justified by faith, we are at peace with God through our Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom we have a way in, through faith, unto this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice the hope of the praise that shall be given of God? Neither do we so only, but also we rejoice in tribulation. For we know that tribulation bringeth patience, patience bringeth experience, experience bringeth hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, for the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet weak according to the time, Christ died for us which were ungodly, Yet scarce will any man die for a righteous man. For adventure for a good man durst man die. But God said thou his love that he hath to us. Seeing that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than now, seeing we are justified in his blood, shall we be saved from wrath through him. For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son. Much more, seeing we are reconciled, we shall be preserved by his life. 
Not only so, but we also joy in God by the means of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by the means of sin, and so death went over all men, and so much that all men sinned. For even unto the time of the law was sin in the world, but sin was not regarded as long as there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them also that sinned not, was like transgression as did Adam, which is a similitude of him that is to come. But the gift is not like as a sin, for if through the sin of one many be dead, much more plenteous upon many was the grace of God, and gift by grace, which grace was given by one man, Jesus Christ. And the gift is not over one sin, as death came to one sin of one that sinned, for damnation came of one sin unto condemnation, but the gift came to justify from many sins. For if by the sin of one death reigned by the means of one, much more shall they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life by the means of one, that is to say, Jesus Christ. Likewise then, as by the sin of one condemnation came on all men, even so by the justifying of one, cometh the righteousness that bringeth life upon all men. For as by one man's disobedience many became sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. But the law in the meantime entered in that sin should increase. Never the later, where abundance of sin was, there was more plenteousness of grace. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by the help of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. There'll be another reading, Lord willing, on Romans chapters 6, 7, and 8. Please share this video. Share the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Brethren, as pertains to the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye have also accepted, and in the which ye continue, by the which also ye are saved, I do ye to wit, after what manner I preached unto you, if ye keep it, except ye have believed in vain. For first of all, I delivered unto you that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins, agreeing to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So believe with your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. He shed his precious blood atonement, and was buried for three days, and rose again, came back to everlasting life, to freely justify all that believe on him. For the scripture saith of the word of faith which we preach is, that if thou shalt knowledge or confess with thy mouth that Jesus is the Lord, and shalt believe with thine heart that God hath raised him up from death, thou shalt be safe. For the belief of the heart justifieth, and the knowledge with the mouth maketh the man safe. For the scripture saith, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's as simple as that. Believe on Jesus. What must he do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. God bless you all. Love you very much. See you in heaven soon when Jesus comes. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. God bless you. This is the 1537 Thomas Nappy's Holy Bible reading of the Epistle of the Apostle St. Paul to the Romans, chapters 6, 7, and 8. Hallowed be the holy name of God. I am that I am, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that there may be abundance of grace? God forbid. How shall we that are dead as touching sin? live any longer therein. Remember ye not that all we which are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ are baptized to die with him. We are buried with him by baptism, for to die, that likewise as Christ was raised up from death by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in a new life. For if we be grafted in death like unto him, even so must we be in the resurrection. This we must remember, that our old man is crucified with him also, that the body of sin might utterly be destroyed, that henceforth we should not be servants of sin. For he that is dead is justified from sin. Wherefore, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall live with him, remembering that Christ, once raised from death, dieth no more. Death hath no more power over him. For as touching that he died, he died concerning sin, once. And as touching that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise imagine ye also that ye are dead concerning sin, but are alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Let not sin reign therefore in your mortal bodies, that ye should thereunto obey in the lusts of it. Neither give ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but give yourselves unto God as they that are alive from death. And give your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Let not sin have power over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but are under, but under grace? God forbid. Remember ye not how that to whomsoever ye commit yourselves as servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether it be of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. God be thanked that though ye were once the servants of sin, ye have yet obeyed with heart unto that form of doctrine whereunto ye were delivered. Ye are then made free from sin, and are become the servants of righteousness. I will speak grossly because of the infirmity of your flesh, as ye have given your members servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity, from iniquity unto iniquity. Even so now give your members servants unto righteousness, that ye may be sanctified. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were not under righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now are ye delivered from sin, and made the servants of God, and have your fruit, that ye should be sanctified, and the end everlasting life. For the reward of sin is death, but eternal life is the gift of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 7 Remember ye not, brethren, I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath power over a man, as long as it endureth. For the woman which is in subjection to a man is bound by the law to the man, as long as he liveth. If the man be dead, she is loosed from the law of the man. So then, if while the man liveth, she couple herself with another man, she shall be counted a wedlock breaker. But if the man be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no wedlock breaker, though she couple herself with another man. Even so ye, my brethren, are dead concerning the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be coupled to another, I mean to him that is risen again from death, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the lusts of sin which were stirred up by the law reigned in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now are we delivered from the law, and dead from that whereunto we were in bondage, that we should serve in a new conversation of the Spirit, and not in the old conversation of the letter. What shall we say, then? Is the law sin? God forbid. But I knew not what sin meant, but by the law. For I had not known what lust had meant, except the law had said, Thou shalt not lust. But sin took an occasion by the means of the commandment, and wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For verily without the law, sin was dead. I once lived without law. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I was dead. And the very same commandment, which was ordained unto life, was found to be unto me an occasion of death. For sin took occasion by the means of the commandment, and so deceived me, and by the self-commandment slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, just, and good. Was that then which is good made death unto me? God forbid. Nay, Sin was death unto me, that it might appear how that sin, by the means of that which is good, had wrought death in me, that sin which is under the commandment might be out of measure sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin, because I wot not what I do. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If I do now that which I would not, I grant to the law that it is good. So then now, it is not I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is to say, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. To will is present with me, but I find no means to perform that which is good. For I do not that good thing which I would, but that evil do I which I would not. Finally, if I do that I would not, then is it not I that do it? But sin that dwelleth in me doeth it. I find then by the law that when I would do good, 
evil is present with me. I delight in the law of God concerning the inner man. But I see another law in my members, rebelling against the law of my mind, and subduing me unto the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, I myself, in my mind, serve the law of God, and in my flesh, the law of sin. The eighth chapter. There is then no damnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, which walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit that bringeth life through Jesus Christ hath delivered me from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, inasmuch as it was weak, because of the flesh, that performed God, and sent his Son in the similitude of sinful flesh, and by sin damned sin in the flesh that the righteousness required of the law might be fulfilled in us, which walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are carnal are carnally minded, but they that are spiritual are ghostly minded. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because that the fleshly mind is enmity against God, for it is not obedient to the law of God, neither can be. So then, they that are given to the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not given to the flesh, but to the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If there be any man that hath not the Spirit of Christ, the same is none of his. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life for righteousness' sake. Wherefore, if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from death dwell in you, even he that raised up Christ from death, shall quicken your mortal bodies, because that his Spirit dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are now debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye must die. But if ye mortify the deeds of the body, by the help of the Spirit, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage to fear any more, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit certifieth our spirit that we are the sons of God. If we be sons, we are also heirs, the heirs I mean of God, and heirs annexed with Christ. If so be that we suffer together, that we may be glorified together. For I suppose that the afflictions of this life are not worthy of the glory which shall be showed upon us. Also the fervent desire of the creatures abideth looking when the sons of God shall appear, because the creatures are subdued to vanity against their will, but for his will which subdueth them in hope. For the very creatures shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. For we know that every creature groaneth with us also, and travaileth in pain even unto this time. Not they only, but even we also which have the first fruits of the Spirit, mourn in ourselves and wait for the adoption and look for the deliverance of our bodies. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is no hope. For how can a man hope for that which he seeth? But and if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience abide for it. Likewise the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what to desire as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession mightily for us, with groanings which cannot be expressed with tongue, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the meaning of the Spirit. For he maketh intercession for the saints according to the pleasure of God. For we know that all things work for the best unto them that love God, which also are called a purpose. For those which he knew before, he also ordained before, that they should be like fashion unto the shape of his Son, that he might be the first begotten Son among many brethren. Moreover, which he appointed before, them also he called, and which he called, them also he justified. Which he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be on our side, who can be against us? Which spared not his own Son, but gave him for us all. How shall he not with him give us all things also? 
who shall lay anything to the charge of God's chosen? It is God that justifieth. Who then shall condemn? It is Christ which is dead, yea, rather which is risen again, which is also on the right hand of God, and maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or anguish, or persecution, other hunger, either nakedness, either peril, either sword? As it is written, For thy sake are we killed all day long, and are counted as sheep appointed to be slain. Nevertheless, in all these things, we overcome strongly through his help that loved us. Yea, and I am sure that neither death, neither life, neither angels, nor rule, neither power, neither things present, neither things to come, neither height, neither loweth, neither any other creature shall be able to depart us from the love of God, showed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4 through 4 is the life-saving gospel, good news of Jesus Christ, promises of grace, mercy, and favor, free justification to all who call upon His holy name. The promise of God, the promise of God, Romans 10, 13, for that, you know, that's a promise of God, but whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The gospel itself is how that Christ died for our sins, agreeing to the scriptures, and he was buried and he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures, so that anybody who calls upon his holy name shall be saved from the condemnation of the law, saved from sin, saved from hell, saved from death. Yeah, you know, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption, have a steadfast faith. Always believe in Jesus. And Psalms 86 5 is a promise, a covenant. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive. The Matthew Bible says, gracious. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. And so the promises of God are faithful and true. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This it, this is just a portion of Romans chapter 10. This word is the word of faith which we preach. For if thou shalt knowledge with thy mouth that Jesus is the Lord, and shalt believe with thine heart that God raised him up from death, thou shalt be safe. I mean, it's a word a little bit different. The word knowledge in this old English means like to, to confess as we know it today. So, and watch and notice compared to the King James. I'll read again. This word is the word of faith which we preach. For if thou shalt knowledge with thy mouth that Jesus is the Lord, and shalt believe with thine heart that God raised him up from death, thou shalt be safe, for the belief of the heart justifieth, and the knowledge of the mouth maketh the man safe, for the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. There is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile, for one is Lord over all, which is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be safe, saved, Praise God, for his mercy endureth forever. God bless you all. You're welcome to share this with as many people as possible that the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, can go across the earth, that people can be saved, and be more people in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I am that I am. Yo te va, hey, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Lord, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. First John 5, 7. God bless you all, brethren, and be aware of thy neighbor as nigh as thou canst, and never trust government because they're a bunch of wicked doers that are just set on evil evil works, you know, for we know that we are of God, and the world is altogether set on wickedness, it says in 1 John 5, 19, I believe. So yeah, they can't be trusted because they're covetous. They have the love of money, which is the root of all evil, and they're very prideful, which makes them hateful. And he that babbleth much becometh hateful. And where much babbling is, there must needs be offense. And I realize that sometimes I can speak like a machine gun rapid fire, so I beg your forgiveness. And this is edification. Words that are of purpose, value, words of truth. So this, I wouldn't consider babbling, but I certainly can talk quite a bit. But yeah, there, there's a lot that's going on on the earth. It's a war between good and evil. Good wins, of course. So, yeah, everybody better come to Jesus, because he's the only Savior. And... We're not under real law. They have this color of law, mere semblance, deception, fraud of law, where they write stuff as if it's law, but they're not even lawgivers. There's only one lawgiver, God Almighty, yod Vavi. So they're trespassers, they're imposters, they're uh, criminals, you know, they're wrongdoers. They're, 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 they're probably have reprobate minds, lewd minds. I mean, they somehow you know, come to Jesus. Um, yeah, God help them. 
not to not to continue in a wicked works, but to forsake them and turn to God. You know. So you know, it's all about faith in, that saves. You know, and this is commandment: that we believe on the name of His Son Jesus Christ and love one another. I love you, brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. God bless you. And pray about the Book of Enoch, whether it is Holy Scripture or not, whether it is divinely inspired by God. You know, there are certain connections that I can notice between the Holy Canonized Bible and these other books that, you know, may pertain to the Holy Bible. You know, the, there are certain books that are referenced. The Book of Jasher, the Epistle to the Laodiceans, is, which is in the Epistle to the Laodiceans, is in John Wycliffe's old translation, 1382, supposedly translated from the Latin Vulgate. Um, if you study your own history, and trust Jesus above all. You know, have a full faith in God, a steadfast faith. I love you all, brethren. And pray for Sister Sarah Mills, please. Oh, Father, somehow, God, give her strength, Lord, help her daughters and family. Pray she's alive until her heart pods of rapture, Lord. Your will be done. God help her. In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Love you, brethren. See you in heaven super duper soon. God bless you. All of you, brethren. Jesus loves you all. God bless you all. And the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Yodhi Vafi. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you know. One God, hallelujah. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be his name. Yeah, here where Don Moen has to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be God's holy name. Yodhi Vafi.